Good morning, students. Today we are going to work with the synthesis of the benzyl ketone. And uh, in this case, this molecule is not provided in your book, but it's rather found in the following paper that is highlighted in blue. It is very important that you pay attention to this, uh, specifically to this presentation, uh, since this experiment is very experimental and has many key details that you need to, to pay attention to. Um, of course, we, we are going to try our best to explain you in detail the procedure for you to understand as best as possible. So, this is the reaction procedure. We are going to work with two molecules of phenyl acetic acid over here and one molecule of iron in order to make dibenzyl ketone and we're gonna get byproduct or side products of hydrogen gas oxygen uh, uh, carbon dioxide and iron oxide as you can see here we have two important questions that you must know in advance um, previous to the, to, the, to the reaction procedure itself. One is what is the molecule, uh, the more molecular formula of phenyl acetic acid and divencyketo. As you can see over here, you, um, you can easily find the, the, the molecular formula of these molecules. And you have to remember that be, the, that a uh, pH uh, means phenyl, uh, which is a benzene ring that you can see in this molecule. Um, in this case, you, it is important for you to know it since in the literature you mostly you can also find um, the benzene ring as pH, right? The other question that you need to to answer is what is the formula weight of phenyl acetic acid, iron, and the benzyl ketone? These two very important questions you need to answer and to know the answer um, for the procedure or for um, to understand, for to help you understand the agreement. Sorry. Now, you need to calculate how much divencyl ketone should we make. So, in this case, we need, um, we need to calculate the reagent quantity, right? So, in this, uh, in the book, in the, ex in the next experiment, uh, which you can find in the page 400, um, the text states that we need 1.05 gram of divencyl ketone but in in the case of our experiments we are supposedly working half scale we have two sections together and two students per group so in this point of the presentation you need to calculate um, uh, the amount of divencyl ketone that in that you need right for the next step in this case you can use this formula over here um, this 1.05 grams since you are working half scale you divide by two and then uh, this is the amount that we, you will need per, per each group you have two sessions 18 students um, per group, per section, right, and uh, in, in and two students per each uh, team, right. In this, with this reaction uh, formula, you can calculate the the amount of divencyl ketone that you that you should make, and from that you can calculate the amount of uh, this product. Uh, or they have the reagent that you need to obtain that amount of product. 
yeah in this case the problem is that it, when you read the article the article you will see that the that the authors only made divensal ketone from phenyl uh, anoic acid in a 71% yield so the question here is should we add subtract multiply or divide this information to the amount of a uh, of divensal ketone um, that we are trying to make and to help you to answer this previous question here we have an ex a practical a daily life example um, if it is recommended that you only spend 25% of your incomes on housing and the houses um, around where you live or when, where you want to live cost 1000 per, per month how much you should earn per month to to adjust to that uh, your income to the to the housing expenses right so how do you, oper do you operate in this case in this case you have that the 100 percent represents the 25 percent of your incomes must represent and what you want to know now is what what is your income what is the the 100 percent of this in, in which 25 percent is going to be equivalent to 1000 in this case you uh, can make a an equivalence between this and this so the equation is going to 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 be like this 1000 which is 20 represented 24 percent times 100 is going to be equal to 25 times x this way we are going to be able to to calculate to solve for dx and to know what is what must be your income when you solve for dx the the equation is going to, to be like this and finally the result is going to be 4000 here this is the final result for this exercise as as we solve this uh, daily life ex uh, example you have to be able to to answer this question how much different cycle should we attempt to make how much if the yield is 71 percent how much should we make if we want this amount of here that you should also calculate we need this amount this, this amount of grams for the next reaction and the yield of the reaction is 71 percent how much you should um, use of study materials for this reaction this is the equation uh, the 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 formulas or the equations in which uh, that help you to calculate the starting materials for this reaction right in the first case uh, we have to we we show you the calculation for phenyl acetic acid how much phenyl acetic acid do we need this amount that a uh, please notice that the B from now on is going to be divensal ketone. This amount of divensal ketone that we need for the for the next step, you divide it by 0 0.71, which is the yield of the reaction, and this is the molecular 
way of the of the divan side kettle then two moles because remember that uh, that we need two molecules or two moles of this uh, of this starting material and this is the molecular weight of the phenyl acetic acid we are going to get the as a product this the amount or the grams of phenyl acetic acid that we need notice that we include two to one stoichiometry for the reaction right and in the case of the grams of iron the same Taking into account the amount of a uh, product that we need and the yield of the reaction, again the molecular weight of the of the product, the benzyl ketone, the molecular weight of a uh, iron, and this is the are the units for the conversion. Time to one of uh, iron and why, why why instead of using one which is the stoichiometric mm, um, coefficient for the iron why instead of using a uh, one we use 1.1 because we are gonna use as you can see here 10 percent excess of a uh, iron since it is recommended uh, by the author of the article right because since the iron it, they say that the iron is uh, commonly impure because it's rots com combined with oxygen in the air over time so in the in the overall and uh, world mass that we are gonna wait we have we are gonna have some molecules of um uh, iron oxide and uh, different types of iron oxide and uh, and we want to make sure that the that the reaction is 100 uh, percent stoichiometric we use the stoichiometric quantity for the phenyl acetic acid and we use the excess uh, 10 percent excess of uh, iron to make sure that the reaction uh, go through with uh, with uh, both starting starting materials uh, enough amount of starting material. So e ideally, if we were in the lab, one group should weigh out the phenyl acetic acid and distribute this information to the class. Other groups should weigh out the iron and distribute the information to the class and the other group uh, should wait out the flask that will be used to collect the final product or oh, since you're gonna work as a whole group you should share all the information that you are getting okay let's go to the procedure first I'm going to to read the procedure and we are going I'm going to explain later on in detail the procedure so quickly help uh, your instructor to complete the following setup making sure to grease all the joints we are going to see uh, uh, in the procedure now special care with the mercury thermometer that go beyond uh, 100 degrees Celsius and in high light uh, you, uh, it is this statement that says that you are responsible for knowing all the parts and function of this setup it, this is always in all the experiments whenever you are going to a chemical a chemistry lab and you are performing an experiment you must read and prepare yourself for the experiment in advance in order to prevent any split any malfunction of um, any equipment or instrument uh, 
to to build the setup or to make this setup uh, uh, as good as possible uh, and also to get the the higher and the best yield yields for the reactions moving forward the second step is uh, to add the phenyl acetic acid and iron to the three neck flask through the center neck making sure to clean the neck and grease all the glass joint. Once your instructor inspect the set to make sure that it's okay, dial your transformer, not picture it in the following slides, to 50% uh, voltage. For safety, the sash of the hood should be lowered and the transformer is placed in the next hood. You will monitor the progress of the reaction by collecting hydrogen and carbon dioxide by displacement of water and trying to combust them. Now, we are going to repeat this but with the setup, with a picture of the setup for you to make sure you understand. This is the setup of the reaction. Over here, in red, as you can see here, we present the trim neck from bottom flask. This is where the whole reaction is going to occur. This thermometer over here is going to monitor the temperature of the reaction. Uh, we are going to be performing a um, distillation. So this second thermometer over here is going to measure the temperature of the distillation or the gas, which is um, going to be the second part of our reaction. In green, we show the round bottom flask in which the, our product is going to be collected after the distillation. Following the yellow, we present the hoses. This reaction, remember, that is going to generate gas. As we had seen before. Which are hydrogen and carbon dioxide. Remember, in the in the reaction, um, in the initially we discussed. The gas is going to drive from the this line over here and it's going to be trapped in this container. Then it flows the gas through this hood and it's then trapped from in this uh, container over here that is highlighted in blue. The container is going to be full of water and after gas is flowing through the hoods, we are going to be uh, to see bubbles in the in this container and it's going to be the way in which we are going to monitor the reaction. Remember that um, as byproducts we are getting hydrogen and carbon dioxide. While we are getting the bubbles in this container, it means that the reaction is still running. Um, it have uh, it haven't finished yet, right? And when we stop seeing the bubbles in this container, it means that the reaction uh, arrived to the final point. It is completed, right? So this is going to be the way in which we monitor. Remember. Remember that in the first step of the reaction, we are getting hydrogen out from uh, from this hood, and in the second step, it's going to to come out um, carbon dioxide. So um, we also are supposedly doing 
a, a collection of the gases by water displacement to identify the gas that we are getting, right? For that purpose, we need to fill a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder with the amount of gas that we want to collect. Then we have to place our hands over the opening of the cylinder, invert and submerge be below the level of the water in the large uh, water pan. Place the cylinder opening over the end of the hood hose to collect the, the, the gas. Bubbles. That will be a bubble, a bubble over the course of the reaction. You will take turns monitoring the reaction for hydrogen gas evolution by carefully placing a match at the opening of the inverter graduated cylinder with the gas you collect. In this case, no, no globe zone, and you. Uh, I hope that you all um, uh, did this experiment before in general came so, uh, for those to 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 the general chem lab. I believe that most of you did, and so if that happened, you must remember that. Uh, what happened when you collect hydrogen and in an inverted uh, container and then you put a match in the in inside it remember that hydrogen and oxygen in the air with fire what happened with in this case what happened is a combustion in this case um, we are going to get um, from hydrogen and oxygen and the fire, uh, the way in which we are going to identify that is hydrogen is by hearing a sound, like a bull or, or a dog sound. Uh, the, the name, the common name is wolf, uh, which is the noise that we are, we are expecting uh, when we have in, uh, hydrogen in the container, right? Uh, in the case of carbon dioxide, uh, uh, the carbon dioxide, when we start coming out of the reaction, uh, it means that this is not going to happen. We are not gonna hear this sound. This sound, and when hydrogen start coming out, is the point in which um, the next stage of the reaction can proceed. In, it, in this case, considering that the air is around 25% oxygen with the remaining not flammable, flammable gases, such as hydrogen, which is the, a, a very high percent of the air, uh, how much water do we need to put into the graduated cylinder to get the largest pop? Remember that the amount of water that you displace in the volume of hydrogen gas that you collect. A road number is around a third, right? So that if you use 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, you collect around 33 milliliters of hydrogen gas. And with this calculation, 20 uh, 0.21 uh, 21 times 66 milliliters of air, which is the rest of the container, since you collect around the third part and this 100 milliliter, the third part is 33, so the the rest of the container it has 66 milliliter approximately of air, right? And since since um, the oxygen represents 21 percent of air approximately, when this with this calculation 0.21 times 66 milliliter of air is going to be 14 milliliters of oxygen, what we are gonna have in the cylinder, right? Or roughly a two to one radio of hydrogen and oxygen, because the ideal gases have the same volume per mole. And 
this is the formula for this reaction for the for the woof or the pop in the sound that you are hearing the in this lab report you need to work out the precise algebra and calculations to make sure that you understand and you calculate as as good as possible all the these reactions and all the product that you're getting all this stoichiometry itself then how much hydrogen are we producing considering that i'm sorry considering that at a standard temperature and pressure a mole of an ideal gas is 22 sorry Oof. Sorry. Um, considering that standard temperature and pressure, a mole of an ideal gas is 22.4 liters. Do we calculate the volume of hydrogen procedure based on the mole of phenyl acetic acid or iron that we are using? That's a very interesting question that you can uh, answer by you doing your calculations and by reading the article in which and and also uh, looking at all this explanation for the water that we need to displace so this is the mechanism of the reaction first of all as you can see here here we have our, our metal and the acid and as you may know, the acid and methyls make hydrogen and salts. For example, in this case, we have lead with sulfuric acid, giving us a lead sulfate and hydrogen. And a spark makes you, your car battery blow up. Makes sense, right? Um, then we have another example in which we have a uh, sodium and water. Water, remember, that can behave both as an acid and basic, depending on the environment, um, giving us, in this case, sodium, hydroxide, and again, hydrogen. This reaction must be balanced, right? Here we have two hydrogens, three hydrogens. We need to balance this reaction. Make sure that you balance it by yourself since it's not balanced here. So it is important, the key uh, for this type of reaction is that the electron transfer from the metal to the sigma anti bond of hydroxyl group makes a radical anion that splits into a nitrogen radical and an oxide. As you can see here, this is the reaction, right? This method attacks the double bond, the radical, a uh, one electron, uh, that is in the sigma anti bond. Uh, of uh, this electron in in this uh, bond, the sigma um, the, the methyl attacks the sigma anti bond of the uh, of this um, group, right? Uh, to generate the this uh, cation and to um, to radicals, hydrogen radicals. Then the hydrogen radical com combine to make hydrogen gas then the oxide combined with the oxided uh, oxidized methyl to make the salt notice in this case as you can see here that they have ampoule arrows to they represent one and two electron movement in this case since it's only one electron that is uh, moving from the methyl to the sigma antibond 
of this group over here. In here, two electrons of this anion move and attack the metal that is positive charged and that is already oxidized. And in here, this and here, those are half, half and half. They combine both to create the molecule, the hydrogen molecule. It's better you can see here. And the salt of the metal. In the case of our um, reaction, is happening the same. You can extrapolate this general uh, mechanism to this mechanism. And remember that in here, we need two moles of the of this molecule. Since in this case, to uh, to combine this hydrogen that that. Uh, that, that this hydrogen radical which came from another um, displacement of another metal with another salt, which means that if we want also to, to, to put the stoichiometry of the reaction in this general reaction, we need in here to, um, as we have here, two moles of a uh, of the acid, right? And in here we have specifically iron, remember, to get the our product of interest in the, the first part of the reaction. This is going to be the first part of the reaction in which we are generating um, hydrogen, right? The second step of the reaction is going to take place with a um, uh, with uh, the heat of the Lewis acid, in this case, um, or Lewis base, base, as you can see here, hydrogen oxide, hydrogen hydroxide, can include the automerization, the formation of a constitutional isomer by moving one hydrogen of a keto form to an enol, right? As you can see here, the enol can undergo in an intramolecular glycan condensation to add to protons, combines with the enolite to make the final product. As you can see here, this is the enol form, and then the uh, this, as you can see, is the intramolecular condensation. Yeah. As, and the final product is going to be this one, right? And after the, in this second step of the reaction, we are getting carbon dioxide, the iron oxide, and the proton, right? So, this is the alternative, as you can see here. So, Today's reaction is equivalent to running several reactions that are co co covered into your lecture. Thus, we are using the article instead of the lecture, um, in the, instead of the book, right? Can you name all the reactions in that, are, that are over here? Do you need to name? This reaction in which you are you are, you are starting with an acid and uh, with a hydroxide uh, molecule, um, you are you are pro uh, you are in an acid medium and you are getting an ester and water, right? This is another type of reaction in which, in which you have. This is another type of reaction in which we have an a, metox, a sodium methoxide and the ester, and we are getting this product over here. You have a salt of an alcohol and an ester, right? And remember that 
you this hydrogen all over here are the name alpha hydrogens right um, in this case you have also the um a reaction between um these two molecules giving a um this product over here this other reaction is involve a a, a a rupture or of the this bond over here um, in acid condition and this is the uh, an intramolecular reordering this is here and this is the other other uh, reaction which involves a CO2 molecule and a you should be able to know the name of all these reactions uh, but if we want to to remember it after you all uh, study all these reactions let's start naming the reactions right this first reaction is an esterification reactions reaction in which you get a, a, an alcohol and a carboxylic acid and get the the ester and water this second reaction which has these two different these two steps first step the formation of this uh, molecule over here and then the reaction of this with the with another mole of a molecule of the sorry of the the ester which is the starting material and they combine its mechanism of these two molecules giving the product this reaction is named Claser condensation in which we are getting as a product a beta keto ester as we can see over here right then we move to this reaction in which you are you are getting an acid and also you must get a, a an alcohol and then the name of this reaction is going to be saponification reaction right and the final reaction is named a reverse diels alder reaction in this first step you there is an intramolecular uh, reordering and with heat this is the uh, the reaction is going to move to this uh, two product by and um, for fine to finally get sorry in this case the reaction is going to be a decarboxylation reaction that starts with the protonation of the carboxyl that breaks the the OH bond and form the P bond which also break this CC carbon and make as you can see over here the double bond carbon carbon then this is this low step of this reaction and then after that we have the tautomerization of the enol um, with the with the carbon uh, carbon dioxide to get finally this ketone at the end so just do your research try to to study all these reactions 
uh, study all the name of the reactions, the mechanisms, and uh, um, all the the, the signs uh, behind this this type of reactions, right? Uh, for you to understand how these reactions work, mostly the mechanism of all these reactions, right? So, uh, you also uh, may find some key questions in uh, when studying this all, uh, all these reactions that are, uh, that are also related to the synthesis. Uh, us, for example, is what's what will be the product of all the reactions? What is the overall pattern of this reaction? What part are addition, elimination of substitution? Which element are being oxidized or reduced in this reaction? This reaction over here, this is the overall reaction for today's um, experiment, right? And you need to answer all these questions. To do so, you must go to your book, read all this below, and study all these reactions that are below, and then come out with a conclusion regarding, first of all, what is the overall pattern of this reaction, as you see? What parts get in? When you get the product, then you can part the product, the product, and the study material and all the all the mechanism for the reaction and then you can uh, be able to answer all these questions mostly which species are being oxidized or reduced what is the movement of the electron all the time in the reaction and when you have an addition a substitution an elimination name all the the type of uh, reactions name all the reactions with the conventional names of uh, um, for each type of reaction and that's it i think that's the way in which you should study uh, for this experiment right after all the procedure before i um, mentioned it the procedure is continued as follow. Once all phenyl acetic acid has melted and reacted with iron, a hydrogen will, will stop being produced. Remember that, uh, that we mentioned before that hydrogen will be produced um, in the first step of the reaction, right? Remember what is the evidence of a uh, hydrogen production? then you need to, to answer by doing a research since you are not in the lab looking at the um, at the experiment if uh, the iron uh, phenyl acetate is a liquid or a solid um, then you start increasing the variable transformer from 50 to 100 percent voltage one percent per minute then when you uh, when you do this step carbon dioxide should start evolving on the reaction and then in this case what is the evidence remember in this case then uh, when you uh, see when you are doing the experiment uh, first uh, the evidence of uh, that uh, the evidence that prove that uh, hydrogen is being produced in the reaction is by the water displacement uh, from the cylinder um, glassware that we got. Remember that we put it in in uh, uh, with the mouse to a uh, down, uh, looking to down, and then. We collect, uh, we add uh, the amount of water needed um, that we are that we previously mentioned and that calculated to this to the 100 milliliter um, cylinder volumetric 
volumetric cylinder, sorry. Um, and the gas is going to displace the, the water from the cylinder. And then how we determine that we have hydrogen in this cylinder by um, putting a match in the mouth of the cylinder and hearing a sound. What is the evidence then that a carbon dioxide it is evolving from this reaction? The evidence is that no more com combustion will be seen or listening, right? If you have hydrogen, you will get the combustion by putting the match in the mouth of the cylinder. But when you have carbon dioxide, no, no more combustion is going to happen, so you are not going to hear any sound after the water is displaced, right? So in each case, you put the cylinder in the in in the when when the where the hose is uh, taking the gas out, put the cylinder with the water. Then the water is going to be displaced by the gas. Then you take the gas, put the mash of, on the mouth of the of the cylinder, and you are going to see what happens. If it is hydrogen, you are going to see a sound to hear a sound. Sorry which means that a, a combustion reaction is, is going to be happening between hydrogen and oxygen, right? But in the case of uh, carbon dioxide, it's not going to happen. So that's the way in which you de determine or distinguish whether you are in the first step of the reaction or in the second step. Um, then, once your reaction reaches 100% voltage you can place an aluminum foil tent in front of the reaction without touching it to allow the reaction to heat further remember that the second step needs more heat and then benzyl ketone should start distilling right getting in the in the wrong bottom flask that we we get to collect the product then you should record the boiling point range with the second thermometer. Should pure benzyl ketone be a solid or a liquid at the room temperature? That's a question that you must answer by a, by reading at your book and looking at your uh, and also reading at the at the at the paper that we that we gave you as a reference. Uh, then. Once uh, the benzyl ketone is stilled in the distillation, heat the temperature uh, will drop, but the pot uh, temperature will rise quickly, right? You must turn off the transformer and load the heating well before the thermometer breaks past the 100, uh, 400 degrees Celsius. Then you have to make sure to remove this hose from the pan of pan of water, a trap with a, a because it will a, fill it and contaminate your sample. It will the water can flow back and contaminate your sample. Then carefully weigh the distillate uh, the distillate and distribute this information to the glass. Remember that you previously weighed, weighed the 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 round bottom flask dry at room temperature uh, and after the distillation when uh, since you have your your product in the round bottom flask you should do the same weigh the container with the with the product inside and uh, at room temperature as well and then subtract those two uh, values to get the net uh, weight of the product that you got um, again, as you can see here, it, remember when it's cooled, it, you need three neck flasks by first freezing it with acetone to remove the organic residues, and then by covering with hydro, iron oxide with hydrochloric acid to dissolve it and dispose it properly. Right? The whole class choose disassemble it and clean the reaction setup. This is very important. After you finish, you should always remove the setup, 
clean all the glassware and uh, keep your workspace as clean as possible for the next group that is coming after you. Then um, there is come uh, there was is when when it comes the characterization, the spectroscopic characterization of your product. Um, first, we need an IR spectrum to identify the functional groups of your product, the the, the dimensional ketone, right? In this case, as, also, as I always tell you, you need to use the minimal sample possible as it may not be possible to recover this. Then, with chloroform, we, will, we need to obtain the proton and MR spectrum. We need to recover the sample by putting the solution onto a watch glass and allowing the chloroform to evaporate. Then, um, you need to share the IR and the NMR for uh, for all the uh, to model for all the sections. So in this case, if it will it was an experimental uh, lab, I hope I truly hope that you all understood this uh, how the setup is in the reaction, how the reaction proceeds proceeds the mechanism of the reaction and as I always tell you if you don't understand anything you can always contact me I can also either answer you um, via email or we can arrange a virtual meeting a, a virtual meeting through zoom uh, to discuss any doubt or concern you have regarding this experiment I hope you all you all have a very great week and see you soon. Bye-bye.